In previous videos we have looked at scripting for the input system, creating new input actions, adding mobile controls, real-time rebinding and working with UI menus. The last two videos in this series are going to be dedicated to local multiplayer games using the input system. Local multiplayer is where two or more players are using the same computer and same screen but different input controllers, such as two gamepad controllers. This is not to be confused with online multiplayer which is different. In this video we are going to look at the player input component and different ways you can use it in local multiplayer games. I have created a new blank project in Unity 6. Go to window and open the package manager. Ensure that input system is installed from the Unity registry and using at least version 1.9 or above. In this series I am using version 1.11. If you want to follow along with this project, install Cinema Machine version 3 and you can find the asset pack to install from the video description below. If you have already downloaded the asset pack from a previous video, reopen your project to follow along with this video. The input system makes it easy to set up local multiplayer games by using two components, the player input manager and the player input. The player input manager component is used within the scene to manage multiple players controlling different characters. It handles the player joining for you, which is done simply by pressing a button on your gamepad or keyboard or mouse. For example, player 1 might press a button on a keyboard and they join the game. The player is spawned in with a player input component. Player 2 presses a button on a gamepad and joins. Once again a new player spawns into the game with another player input component and the same happens for player 3. The amount of players you can spawn in depends on how many controllers you have connected to your device. The player input manager is now communicating with all three player input components and each player is able to control their own character with a different controller such as gamepad or keyboard. Go to the Art and Prefabs folder and open the Player 1 Prefab. This character has a pre-written script attached. We want to set it up for a local multiplayer game. Add a Player Input component. This is used for multiplayer games to differentiate between players using different controllers. You can add any input system action asset into the top slot, but in most circumstances this will be the project-wide input system action asset. If you do not see the input system actions asset or you accidentally delete it, go to edit and project settings in the input system package section. Input system package version 1.8.2 and above allows you to create and assign a default project wide action asset with predefined input actions. You can use the default scheme drop down to set a specific input controller for this player or you can leave it on any and it automatically assigns the controller the player is using to this player input instance and that makes that controller off limits for other players. This is how each player can control their own character using a specific input controller. The default map drop down displays all action maps in the input action asset. In this case there are only two, however if there were more it would display all of them and you can then choose which action map this player should start with. The on enable and on disable is handled automatically by the player input component. Each player input instance can have its own unique UI inputs and camera. The behavior is how the player interacts with C sharp scripts. From the drop down there are four behavior types. Send messages is the default, however you can also have broadcast messages, invoke unity events and invoke C sharp events. We will look at each of these and how to write code for them. Double click to open the input system action asset. We are going to create code for simple movement inputs. These are the move and look inputs which are both value and returning a vector to. Move is mapped to the left stick of a gamepad controller and WASD or arrow keys on keyboard. Look is mapped to the right stick on gamepad and mouse movement. Send messages and broadcast messages work in a very similar way. Send messages is used when the script and the player input component are in the same place. In this example they are both on the player armature. The player input component then sends messages to the script. Broadcast messages is used when the script is in a different location to the player input component. The player input component could be on the parent object with one or more scripts attached to child objects. 
The messages are broadcast from the player input component and are received by all scripts attached to this character. We can see in the inspector which messages it will send. The ones we will use are on move and on look. They must be written exactly as shown in the inspector. Open the player controller script. Ensure the script is using the input system namespace. The script has all the walk and rotation code pre-written. We have two vector two variables to store the input values for both move forward and back as well as look rotation. The function must be public to be accessible to outside components. The input player sends or broadcasts a message called onMove, so we use an onMove function to receive the input value, storing it in a temporary variable called value. This stores all information regarding that specific input. Get the vector2 from the value variable and store it in the vector2 move amount variable. Do the same for onLook. The code is exactly the same for both send messages and broadcast messages. This script will now work to receive inputs from the player input component. Let's look at the Invoke Unity events. Invoke Unity events exposes all the events within the input system actions asset and displays them in the inspector. The device lost and regained are when a controller loses connection with the device. For example, maybe the batteries run out on the gamepad controller and the device is lost. You can then write code to deal with that type of an event. The player and UI action maps are also revealed and within each are the actions. You don't have to use all the actions. In the script, the function is public so it can be used within the player input component. I will keep the onMove function name, however you can call the function whatever you like. It will then return an input action callback context. We will pass this data into a temporary variable called context. Much like the send messages, this stores all the information sent from the input. We read the vector2 value from the context variable and store it in the move amount vector2 variable. Do the same for onLook. Add a new entry in the move event, dragging the object from the hierarchy that has the script attached. In this case, it is the player armature. Then from the drop down, find the player controller script and you will see the public functions at the top. Choose the correct function matching this event. Do the same for the look event. This will now work to run the functions from script when those events are triggered. Let's look at invoke C sharp events. Invoke C sharp events is used when you want to control inputs directly from code. Find the input system actions asset and generate a C sharp class. This will create a script that we can then access in code. In the player controller script, create a new variable of the class we have just created. In this case, it is input system actions. In the awake, create a new instance of the input system actions and pass that into the M actions variable. Because we are creating a new instance, this is best used to control a single player. Multiplayer is best suited to the other methods we looked at previously. In an onEnable method, enable the player action map. We have to manually enable the action maps when using C sharp events. Using the M actions, access the player action map and the move action. Then check the phase, which here is performed, meaning the left stick has been moved from its initial state or the WASD or arrow keys have been pressed. Subscribe to a function, which here I have called move input by using a plus equals. When getting values like this, it will only update the move input on press or when the gamepad stick is moved, but it won't do anything when the keys are released or the gamepad stick is released. So we need to check when the phase is cancelled and send that data to the move input function. We only need to write the cancel code when the action in the input actions editor is set to value. This returns callback data only when the axis is actuated meaning when it has a value different to its resting state. If however we were to set the move and look actions to pass through, it would return callback data even when the left and right gamepad sticks are in a resting state, and the cancel code would not be necessary. Do the same for the player look. Here I am subscribing to a function called rotate input. Create the move input function. This receives an input action callback context that will store in the context variable. Then read the vector2 value from the context and pass it into move amount. Do the same for rotate input and read the vector2 value 
from the context and pass it into an look amount variable. Create an onDisable method that will be called when the player dies or is destroyed. Disable the player action map. Unsubscribe from the move input and rotate input functions by using the minus equals. This script will now control a single player using the player input component. And that brings us to the end of this video. We have looked at different ways to write code for the player input component. In the next video, we will look at using the player input manager to set up a variety of different types of local multiplayer games. To find out more, click on the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching.